Hey, what's good, y'all? Welcome back to the channel, all right? And this one right here is going to be super impactful. We're going to take y'all through a mini doc, all right? I got my, my guy, Jahad Davis, who is going to be a future Formula One racer, all right? Went to my alma mater, St. Aug. Uh, so this video is going to be special because we're going to get to go back to St. Aug. We're going to sit down and have an interview with Jahad. We're going to go and race go-karts. We're going to go talk to the class and I mean, this video right here, what I want you to get out of this is that collaboration over competition for one, because we saw the, the things that Jahai was doing out in the community, one with him being from St. Aug and the impact that, you know, he's having on a sport. And also for us, uh, we, we thought that it would be very special because a lot of times we don't also get to see people that's like us, that's running businesses, that's having brands. And so we want to just show that collaboration and competition is real. We actually created a design, uh, a race design. But without further ado, let's go hop inside this video. It's going to be super impactful. I hope you enjoy this. Hello, folks. Welcome to the Hot Wheels Drop the News. My name is Jahan Davis. I'm 17 years old. I currently attend St. Augustine High School. I'm a member of the golf team, the Knights of Praise, and the Marching 100. And I'm also a professional racing driver along all of that. Man, all right, so, because uh, that's what we're here for today. We're here to get into this race, and also, y'all going to see later on, we're going to get on the cart, and, uh, you know, we're going to take first place. But uh, can you tell me just a little bit about how you even got into racing? Well, it, it started with, when I was younger, I always had a passion for cars, but when, there was, when I was younger, there was a race on the TV. Mind you, I'm like two, three years old, so I don't really know what's going on, but I know, you know, I like that. And ever since then, it kind of just stuck. Like anything, not necessarily like cars, but like fast, like spaceship looking cars, like cars that can do unthinkable stuff. And it was around like quarantine, this is, I found out like this is what I want to do. And I found out about Lewis Hamilton and him being black and pro-black and standing up for like people who was police brutality victims and stuff like that. And once I saw him doing that, I was like, I need to start doing it. I need to find my passion and do what I want to do and be just like him, but be my own man at the same time. First, how many of y'all know about World Envision in here already? Uh, how many of y'all have had some World Envision in here? All right, good bit. All right, so can anybody tell me the story? We started with 12 shirts and what? 12 shirts and? $120. Hey, almost. You almost got it. All right, but we started the brand with 12 shirts and $120. Literally, we was uh, Mr. Dixon. He don't probably sell candy no more, but we was uh, back doing Mr. Dixon, selling candy in class, making a few dollars doing that. Realized that we could sell iPhone accessories, made a bigger margin. So we was getting on eBay, getting the loan chargers, rechargeable cases, the buttons and stuff like that, and literally just selling it. We realized we were taking all our money and buying clothes. Uh, we was buying like Crooks and Castle, 10 Deep, Diamond Supply at that time. And uh, we was just like, why not just start our own brand? So we started by uh, just making designs on custom ink and Uber prints and literally just getting it into our house and selling it. We realized that that wasn't the best way to go. It was very like costly. And so literally all we did was go on YouTube University and Google Academy. How many people in here know we got a YouTube channel? How many people in here watch the YouTube channel? Yeah, all right. So that's how we got our information and got jump started with doing our brand. And so we went out and uh, we literally went to the print shop. We had $120, got 12 shirts, went to the St. Mary's Fair and started selling them things. Uh, so from there, we just kept doing it. We turned 12 into 24, 24 into 50, 50 into 100, 100 into 200, go back to zero, do it all again. You know, we failed a lot of times. 
Uh, but from that, we, we was, you know, building our character and building our brand. It was during that process in high school, we didn't have dreams of like becoming a business owner or nothing like that. I was playing football, basketball, and baseball here, and I wanted to be a professional athlete. And believe it or not, Nick was like an actor in commercials and stuff like that. I know he don't look like it. Um, but uh, we had other things that we was doing. We was fortunate enough to get the scholarships to college where we went to Louisiana Tech and we got in a business accelerator program. Inside that business accelerator program, it took our, our hobby and turned it into a business. Is when we started to learn more about, you know, not just having, you know, you got product, you got an LLC, you think you're in business, but it's way much more than that. Is you know, cost of goods, profit, marketing, team building, taxes, so many other accounting, uh, hiring, firing, building systems, uh, and it was just so much more. And in that program, we realized the mission behind our brand was that we wanted to provide original designs and branded fashion to urban youth who feel stagnant and trapped by what the environment tells them what they can and cannot do. And what I'm just saying by that is just like we realized that we had very low awareness at the time when we was doing our brand. And all I'm saying by awareness is just like truly understanding like what you want to do and how to actually accomplish that. You know, uh, I was talking to my sister the other day and I feel like a lot of times and even her at this moment, she operating in the middle. And what I mean by that is somebody tell me, if you land on the, the, the bed at the hospital and the, and the thing, it do what? Boop, 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 what is doing? Going up and down, right? So tell me what happened when it goes straight. What that mean? You did. A lot of people in life operate in that middle space and they just going straight and they think that they either not, they think that they're going up. But in reality, if you're moving straight, you're moving down. So you have to choose to realize every day that you either going up or you either going down. All right, I got one more thing for y'all. Give it up for Nick. You know why? Because he made sure that we brought all of y'all World and Vision chains. Of course, of course. My bad, baby. I think we got shit have enough for everybody. Maybe. I knew you didn't get a shirt. Got a chance, big man? Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, all right, look, I got a few shirts here. We're going to have mixed sizes. You're going to have, we're just going to play whoever get the first size. Trivia, though. Trivia. What year did World Envision start? Where's your hand? 2013. Nope. 2011. Nope. 2012. Nope. Nope. 2010. Yep. That's, uh, you know, very, very inspiring. So I also got a question with. Um, with working with World and Vision, like what are you most excited for? Uh, I know we're working on a collaboration. A lot of people are gonna get to see that T-shirt, and you know it means a lot to us because you know just not making a racing design, but actually getting a partner with somebody that you know wants to be a professional racer, and also being coming from you know my high school, so it's a big thing. Uh, what do you expect to get from this collaboration? I expect to get like very, like a, a lot of respect and a lot of notoriety because of like y'all are like. Y'all clothes are, first of all, amazing. And then you as a person, you and Mr. Nick, y'all are amazing people. Y'all got good personalities and y'all know how to network. So I know it's gonna be, it's gonna come out really, really good. Okay, I, I like that. What do you see the vision for yourself in the future? I could see myself inspiring millions of kids, millions of black kids to be like, hey, I wanna go do this, I wanna go that. Not specifically racing, but like anything they wanna do. They got black kids that could wanna be tennis players. They could black kids that could wanna be uh, lacrosse players, you know, stuff that's not of our ordinary, stuff that's not something that black people would normally go partake in. And I understand, and a lot of people see like the good and success that you got, uh, but can you share like, you know, maybe a struggle or something that you really had to overcome to uh, get to where you are right now, or something that you're still working on overcoming? Something that would probably be, it would probably most be like the racism and like just the environment of racing. I understand. And, and, and we relate a lot to that too because honestly, you really don't see people like us doing the things that we're doing or, you know, having a brand, 
uh, accelerating at a brand, partnering with other people, doing stuff like this. So I think that that's you know that's spot on, and we and we accomplishing that same goal to inspire people that's not you know excelling or doing it. What, what we may not see people because what what all our people may be for us is like sports or entertainment, uh, but there's so many different avenues. Um, it, before we you know we wrap this up, what do you want people to know about Jahan Davis? I want them to know that Jahan Davis is doing what everyone should be doing and what everyone wants to do. If you find it in your heart that this is what you want to do, don't let nobody tell you nothing. You just go do it. Just get it on your own. If you want something done, you do it yourself. Like how I did, how I wanted to race, I just did it on my own. I talked to my mom, I was like, this is what I want to do. And I just wanted to know that I'm not taking no for an answer. I'm going to do it my way and I'm going to get it done. Hey, right now we walk in the hall, so yeah, for one, how, how does it feel that, you know, we both come from St. Aug? What's St. Aug mean to you? St. Aug mean the best in the city. The best, when I, like, when I'm a graduate and when I go to my college, like, probably out of state, they're going to know St. Aug. Like, they're going to know, oh, S.A., Purple and Gold, Purple Nights, March 100, stuff like that. Speaking of, like, uh, I think we, we up on this wall somewhere, like, class of 14, right here. Yeah, right there. Right here. Like, we had, uh, we said we had one of the best classes to come through. Dang, your boy, right here. And Ooh. baby. Man, we had some. We had, uh, we had Leonard Fournette. He was the number one player in the country at the time. We signed all the senior class, yeah, right there. We signed, like, once it was like 12 to 16, D1 at least my year. Uh, so, yeah, it was fun. So, I got a question. So, coming from St. Aug, what legacy you want to leave uh, coming from him? I want to leave the legacy of like success and try and probably get like that Purple Knight Award for like doing something prestigious and stuff like that. And I want to leave the legacy my dad left me because he went to all, he downstairs somewhere. He 87, but I still want to leave a legacy that he left and I'm going to leave a legacy for my son and hopefully it keep going and going and going. Hey, we appreciate it. Hey, Purple Knight, St. No, where, hey, where everything changed, greatness happening, huh? Yeah. Crazy. Appreciate you. Hey. Man, let's go raise some cars. Let's go. Hey, I'm just checking in, hoping that you enjoying this video right here. Y'all about to go see me race this go-kart. I can't wait for y'all to see it. I ain't gonna let y'all know what happened. Y'all just gonna have to see it for y'all, so. All right, let's get back into it. Man, listen. I'm gonna let them go in front, and I'm literally, I'm gonna use a type they call bump drafting and use it in NASCAR. We do it on the track, too. I'm gonna push him. I'm gonna push one of them into each other, and I'm gonna pass both of them at the same time. Why? I'm literally... I'm about to burn these dudes. They don't make no sense. They just don't know. They just don't know. It's all love, though. It's all love. But they still gonna get burnt, though. They still most definitely gonna get burnt. Hey, we just wrapped up. We just went crazy. Y'all just watched the video of us racing Jihad. All right, Jahai is um, very special to us. He graduated from St. Aug. I graduated from St. Aug. He doing big things. He's taking this go-karts that y'all just see us race, and he's gonna be taking that to Formula One. So we supporting him in his journey on being a Formula One racer. Y'all just saw us race live, and stay tuned. Make sure you like, subscribe to the channel, run us up. We gonna have more. We'll see y'all later. He's been doing this not as long as some of the other kids, but when he decided that he really, really wanted to do this, so we went to, um, just happened to be watching the NASCAR race, and a commercial came on that says "Next Generation Racers," and the commercial had all African American kids sitting at a table listening to a driving instructor. So I just did my research on it and called them and seeing what I had to do to get him into the class, and um, they sent me the paperwork. I talked to the driving instructor of the academy. Uh, we flew out to Indianapolis and we went to the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. That's where the training was held at. And uh, we got there. It was amazing. They had like uh, maybe, how many was in your class? Maybe 15? Oh, uh, next generation racing. Like 15. like 15 African American kids from the ages maybe 7 to 16. And the racing instructor, his name is Rod Reed. He's just giving back to the community to get the African American society introduced to racing because he grew up in Indianapolis and right across from the 
the speedway, which we, nobody knows, is the hood. So growing up in that area, they always told the African-Americans, do not cross that track and go to that racetrack because they'll do you something. They're going to hurt you because blacks not allowed over there. So everybody in that area, believe it or not, the Indianapolis Motor Speedway is right next to the hood. So all of this is prevalent, I mean, accessible to us if we knew or had any kind of, if we was introduced to it. So we couldn't go. So this guy, Rod Reed, which is the instructor, he decided to give back and start this program to teach African-American kids about the racing sector, whether it be a driver, uh, pit crew, technician, or whatever, just the racing sport itself. So we went and um, had an amazing experience. It was a three-day course, a beginner's course, and he did well. And it wasn't basically about racing, it was just uh, the fundamentals, how to brake, how to accelerate, how to go through turns, what's the flags, all of the basic stuff you need for racing. So from that point on, he started adding to his um, skill of racing and that's where we at now so um you know i just want to be thankful that we had the opportunity to i don't know i guess god was just you know looking at us because this is what he wanted to do and i needed to know how to get him into did it you know into the racing section so um just flashed across the screen and there it was like here it is you know this is what i want y'all to do this is what you've been asking for go do it Right now, I'm in the, like the mid pack of all the fast people, so this should be interesting. Hopefully, I I be like fast enough to catch somebody, but I don't know. I don't know. It's game time. Game time. It's a big class. Single light class is a big class, so they're going out and doing their qualifying one by one. That way, everybody can get their best time. Back. Go get them, go get them, go get them. There you go. Go get them. Come on. Go get them. <laughs> what, what happened? You, you sprint out of your side? No, man. I was coming out and he cut me off. I knew, I see, I see somebody had cut you off. Yeah, I he cut it. me off. Because he went, he went up, and then he came right back down. I, I should have just hit him. Should have just hit him. Yeah, you wouldn't have spun out. I should have, no, because then, if I would have hit him, I mean, okay. I would have got a penalty. So wipe, wipe that out. You no, know, you, you just got to always be prepared that, you know, just second guess that that person is going to go up under you. And... Just have that in your mind to be prepared for it, you know. So we're gonna wipe that off. We still got a whole day of racing today, and we got a whole day of racing tomorrow. So you can make all that time back up.